the number one criticism I hear of African television and cinema is that it unmistakably mirrors that of its Western influences. Now, I have very little grudges to hold against inspiration, very little against plagiarism and even less against theft. Outright steal it. I don't mind. I'm a huge Tarantino fan. But I feel like we are a little misguided here because Kenyan filmmakers for since the days of yore we have been borrowing the wrong thing. I am Masina. I have wished ill upon my fellow man. I have thought in pure thoughts. And I'm here to tell you about that. These are the sins and shortcomings of the Kenyan film industry that have been pervading and ruining our reputation for decades. I am going to list them down and hopefully explain some of it to you. Why, why our Kenyan filmmakers are struggling with these issues. Possible solutions, if any, to these problems. But mostly it's just going to be me rambling about it. So there you go. Okay, now the biggest problem that I see that our dear dear Kenyan filmmakers are handicapped in is they have no visual sense. These people, it's like they have no idea that they can move their camera around. Have you ever noticed that in every Kenyan TV show between scenes to indicate to the audience that a new scene is beginning, there's usually this drone shot over the terrain of the next scene or over the city and then the next scene plays in. It's usually shot reverse shot. It's usually just two people sitting down progressing the story through dialogue short reverse shot drone shot short reverse shot drone shot and then we kill it and that's fine that's fine especially if it's a tv show that's television classic classic template but when it comes to cinema there's a certain oomph in visual language there's a reason the silver screen is 20 feet high it's not so that we can see faces that that that, that big even though we do enjoy that as well but is a lot of potential that these people are really just killing now someone tried to explain this away to me and i understand how budgets work like kenyan films and kenyan content we don't really have big budgets to orchestrate big expensive shots and do them over and over again and there's time constraints on sets and the filmmakers have to get creative but therein lies the problem they don't get creative they just do the, the drone shots the shot reverse shot and you know Art, art is created at the crucible of limitations. So if, yes, we don't have money, we don't have time, maybe the story you're changing, maybe the way you want to tell it should change, perhaps. Maybe how the Western people did it, which is your inspiration for probably telling this story, the resources they had at their disposal, unfortunately, you do not. So you change the approach, you change the way of telling the story, but our local filmmakers just seem to substitute and make compromise after compromise after compromise until at the end the final result looks nothing like the inspiration even though it may sound and it may sound like it and it may be uncannily almost similar but there's always this delicate ingredient that just makes it off the it factor is gone now i wrote an article about this uh like it for cinema focus and i was speaking to the director of nafsi Ruben Odanga and he told me he really opened my eyes about this matter he told me that in that generation uh, film was introduced to this country through documentaries and NGOs and that's how we were you know how that's how we first interacted with film with cinema particularly most of us grew up after the heyday of television this is the 80s and the 90s so television was the medium of culture not cinema like it was in the earlier half of the 20th century people grew up on television and here's the thing about television i have nothing against television i love it but countless debates have been had over this and i am firmly of the opinion that television is a lesser medium to film and there are several reasons why i say this one television's inherent purpose is to sell ads now the reason a television show exists is so that after 10 minutes the money now the real game can start be, can be played the money that's flowing around in those three minutes of advertisement that's the whole existence of the television program is to in, in, in induce viewers to keep their attention on the television screen for those two minutes in between those 10 10 10 here 10 there just so that you can listen to what they're trying to tell you and that 
therein lies the problem. We have a good television season out right now. It's a hit. Everyone loves it. It's artistic. It's great. But it's such a hit that the network needs it needs a new season the very next year. And television is a, a, the type of thing that runs on schedule. It's not like a film where someone can say, "Oh, I need more time to edit," or "I need more time to shoot." And once you release it, it's done. With television, it's like, okay, season one came out last year during the fall. Season two needs to come out the next fall. So we are scrapped for time. We need a writing team. We need a directing team. We need it's a machine. It's a machine. And it can't really be classified as a work of art because a work of art by definition has to have a, a dominant personality, a voice. A television show is made in such a hustle and bustle environment where there's seven writers, there's four directors, story changes midway due to circumstances and acting schedules it's to a point where it's no longer a work of art it can't even be thought of a work of art. it's a product it's purely a product and since they have to do it very quickly they don't have time to consider shots and to make the most beautiful thing possible they just have time to make something digestible and that's that's what i have against television it's the basic ideology of it and that's where our filmmakers got their whole mo for making films and television which leads me to another point right now we're experiencing a renaissance in Kenyan film a lot of financiers and sponsors and bodies are investing in the Kenyan film industry and which is great but uh before that when the Kenyan film industry was kind of lagging the television industry was thriving it's always been thriving citizen tv the papa shirandulas the kdis the match charis and them they've always been thriving and it's always been like a tradition. Television culture in Kenya is very strong, albeit shitty, but strong, unlike the film market. So now what I'm seeing with the filmmakers, some of which, some of whom may have been transitioning to television, some of whom may not, is that they're making films that look like television. They're lit like television shows. They are shot like television shows. The stories are delivered like television shows. It feels like they've been broken down into episodic parts. And I feel like the film, the film, 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 Kenyan filmmakers really need to, really need to go deep into themselves and really do their research and do their homework and watch great cinema. Cinema that, unfortunately, in Kenya, I mean, culturally, there's, there's no great theater road shows that cross the ocean to come and perform in Kenya. We are not treated to high art films. Even today, the great cinema does not cross the borders to come to Kenya. We only get the wide releases, the Marvels, the, the big studio movies that are trying to uh, trying to open wide, which is like in every theater in the country. But the real cinema, we don't, we're not, even today, we're still not a uh, party to that. And that's a problem. You see, so uh, my advice to every filmmaker, and this is from a young film critic who has spent a childhood in dark rooms. I have seen nearly everything. And I can tell you, this is a problem. You need to go and watch films by Eisenstein. You need to my God, we have filmmakers in this country working who don't, who don't, who have never seen a D.W. Griffith film, who don't know who Orson Welles is, who only hear about Hitchcock through osmosis. I mean, there's so much history. And if you really love cinema, and I'm talking to all of you right now, if you really love cinema, you do your homework and you know your history. Cinema is like, it's like a communal site building and we're just the latest builders on the site. Uh, it is, they've always been processes. D.W. Griffith literally invented everything we have today. Even the TikTok posts and the, the shots and everything. They all go back to our grandfather, that racist son of a bitch. D.W. Griffith literally invented shots, reverse shots, inserts. He gave us all of that shit. The French, the Russians were good with the, with the long takes. The French were innovative with the cutting. Orson Welles with Citizen Kane brought them all together, showed us ceilings, allegedly. And then we took it from there. You know, the, the French did the French thing again in the 60s with the, with the scissors. Uh, the Indonesians and the Asians made the action movie what it is, you know, in Hong Kong and whatnot. And then where do we, as Africans, what do we have to contribute to the medium? It's so young. It's only 100 years old. There must be something we haven't tried yet, isn't there? So instead of just rehashing stuff from the past and putting it in an African lens, which can be done in a very good way, but I just don't think we are quite there yet instead of doing that how about embracing our limitations embracing our small budgets 
our limited time, our hack night crews, you know, embracing all that, our motley ambitions, and just coming up with something completely new. You know what I really love? I really love what they're doing there in Wakaliwood, in Uganda. They don't get a lot of proper coverage because people think of them as an extension of the DJ Afro kind of cinema. Not really. But I think that the be- one of the best action movies maybe of this century. So there's this movie called Bad Black. It's a hilarious roar of a movie akin to something like The Room. But that movie is it's, it's some of the most thrilling cinema out there and it's it's free. You can you can watch it on YouTube. I think I'll put post a link on the in the description. Now moving on to my next point of contention and it's probably gonna be a drone shot over here to separate the chapters. I'm going to be talking about subject matter. And I think this is also coming against from the leap to the ideology of the upbringing from television to film. We make films, a lot of filmmakers in this country, good ones, bad ones too. We make films for film festivals. We don't make films for audiences. We don't make films to sell the tickets. We make films. I don't know why we think of cinema as such a very serious thing. It's not. Cinema is, it's not a joke either, but it's not. You know, every, there's no movie that you can tell me that you can not explain the whole point of it on the pin of a head. There's no movie at all that you can't really just put on the pin of a head and put. If you wanted a deep medium, maybe literature. Maybe literature. But cinema is not about ideas. Cinema is about moments and emotions. You don't remember the details of who framed the butler and who did this and that. No, no, no. Nobody remembers that. You remember the look in an actress's eye. The, 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 the moment when the music was swelling up and that guy was riding a sandworm. You remember, you remember when everything works just right in that, those precious two, three moments where you forget to breathe, you know? That's 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 what movies are about. They're not really about ideas or themes or stuff that really belong in a brochure. That's not really what they're about. And again, Ruben did tell me about this. We're introduced to movies through NGOs who have agendas and who obviously use the medium to promote these agendas, which is fine and there's a space for that on, on itself. But commercially, as a whole, as a film industry, if we are to survive, we need to cater to the public we need to make movies for the public not for film festivals not deep introspective art house movies that the general joe just would sleep at you know we need to make fun exciting crowd pleasers and some filmmakers get this ruben adanga gets this jen fagatero gets this F- abel mutua and phil phil philip karanja these guys fucking get this and uh, they're, they're fucking mavericks in their own way but for the rest of you, uh, <laughs> I'm sure there are others out there, but for the rest of you, please, change your ways. And the thing about uh, visual language is that it's so heartbreaking is because geographically we're kind of fucked, geographically and culturally, in terms of cinema, because like I said, television, documentaries, NGOs, like we never, we never grew up watching Kurosawa films, we never grew up watching, you know, because there's the thing about audiovisual not just cinema talk about audiovisual even the camera that you're watching this on on your smartphone and your social media the thing about audiovisual is it's a language we've created in the past hundred years like it's a literal language but it's a visual language and like all language it's best assimilated during youth or young age and these filmmakers who are now in their 30s and 40s who did not at their at their ripe age were not ingrained the meaning the emotional meaning of a pan uh, of a zoom as opposed to a push-in. You know, this, these things have different meanings that I don't, I haven't felt a Kenyan filmmaker utilize with as much mastery as a Martin Scorsese or a Christopher Nolan even. You know, it's like there's a certain upbringing that is necessary, which I feel like the Kenyan government needs to... It's, it's It all comes down to education. All things come down to education and I feel like education is the most important the most important yet ignored field in Kenya. Now here I am, not talking about cinema, talking about 
the larger whole and you see for example the movies that people do like stuff like the godfather the, the movies that filmmaker sites in interviews and i have interviewed some of them some of them that they do say that oh we like this this is the godfather good fellas they talk about stuff like narcos and that's why there's a proliferation of crime series on showmax and netflix anytime this they give us money for crime let's do a crime with something with football on side or music something it's so cliche it's like damn it come on think of something else because and the thing is why it doesn't work the number one reason there are several reasons go read my review on on reviews of these shows on cinema focus if you want details but i'll give you one the main reason it doesn't work is in kenya we have a leading man problem the reason why goodfellas works is because you believe the cockiness and of 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 the character played by um henry hill played by Ray Liotta, the character played by Ray Liotta, you believe his cockiness, you believe his brashness, you even, you, 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 you're invigorated to go on this ride with him, yeah, let's do dangerous thing, this is a guy I would follow to the gates of hell, he has charisma, but you see with shows like Pepeta, with shows like County 49, shows like, like, the Pity Pond shows, there's several shows like Volume, Pity Pond shows, um, the main character is often a disenfranchised youth and cultural just in kenya they have to place the story in the real world setting so their protagonist their henry hill would be a guy from the ghetto who's you know powerless and he's trying to make his way in the world and the number one problem why that crime genre might not work in this part of the world it works in nigeria the nigerian shows work for some reason i think the actors are more they have more oomph, oomph in them but in kenya it just falls flat these guys have no charisma their characters even in the script as they are written they're not exciting enough i would not follow you to the gates of hell i would not i'll just watch from a distance and say sorry that happened now there are these are just some of the scenes of kenyan television and film and i ask you dear viewer if these scenes are responsible for the poor commerciality of Kenyan films or the poor commerciality of Kenyan films is due to these things. I think it's a little bit of a Mobius strip there. I think it's, it goes both ways. All things are connected. But I think the Kenyan, Kenyan movies can really make a lot of money once you start embracing us, ourselves for who, who, we, who we really are. Cut the bullshit. We all know that in, in this kind of showbiz industry, we expect a lot of bullshit. Keep the bullshit behind the scenes. Let's actually do good work in front of the scenes let's actually be very artistic when you want to artistic and you give us good work you can you can you have carte blanche to act however which way you want but first of all i want every local kenyan african filmmaker to, tomorrow morning take a good look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself what's my point of view that's the most important question you can ask yourself what's my point of view go back think forward Look around. What's my point of view? That's it.